Hey yo everybody, Haku here with my review of One Piece episode or One Piece chapter uh, 835. So either way, this one was really really good. Lots of info, lots of uh, plot points flying everywhere still this arc. But um, basically we start out we have this really nice color spread. I really like this one, it's pretty cute. Don't know if I like it as much as the last two we've had or not, but it's pretty cute. Um, and then we see where or before we pick up where we left off, we get this one quick page showing the uh, tax that happens once every six months where the uh, incarnations ask the citizens leave or life. And of course, we're left to wonder what it means until later on in the chapter. So I thought that was a really good way to set things up and make you wonder about it throughout the chapter. And really, this arc and the last arc have both had a lot of really good layers in the storytelling. This one has so many layers though that like, this arc there is so much going on that I am just like thrown everywhere. Like we have the stuff with like Brook and Pedro, we have the stuff with Tamago, the stuff with Pudding, the stuff with Sanji, the stuff with the Jerma, the stuff with uh, his siblings who've yet to arrive, with Jimbei, with Jimbei's crew, with Big Mom herself, with Caesar Clown and uh, her son that has Caesar's heart with um, Peckhams and freaking Capone and his family. There's just so much, not not even mentioning our main group, like, and now they're all split apart doing separate things apparently. There's just so many plot points flying everywhere this arc. But um, picking up where we left off, we see Luffy with all of the uh, supposed clones or copies that he was rounding up and we have a hilarious scene with the real Nami. I thought it was really, really funny. And the real Nami goes into uh, telling the story of how she escaped from where we last saw her with uh, in Brulee's clutches, really. So she escapes from Brulee using um, the climb attack, and once she gets out of her clutches, then Carrot rushes in, uses Ella Claw, badass, our queen, Carrot. And, um, but the Elaclaw is re reflected and we find out that Brulee is the eater of the Mirror Mirror Fruit, or Mira Mira Nomi. And um, she uses that power to trap Carrot in a mirror world, and then goes on to, um, like, explain how, like, she's there because she was given orders, just like all the trees in the rest of the forest. They were given orders by Big Mom to prevent the Straw Hats from meeting up with Sanji. And um, beyond that being their plan, she then calls upon the uh, trees and everything to attack them. Chopper goes monster point to hold them off while Nami runs away. And we find out from Brulee that Big Mom is also collecting a bunch of like interesting beasts from all around the world as well as trying to make a family of every race. So going back to where we are in the current time, Nami says that this all happened at the Apple Juice Giant dude. And since it all happened there, that's why she's like pretty much interrogating the dude. Then we find out from the Giant dude that Big Mom ate the Soul Soul Fruit and uses that once every six months to take a month from every citizen's lifespan in like exchange for living there and under their safety and protection. And she takes these little bits of human souls and sprinkles them all throughout the country so that they fall into random objects, plants and stuff, and even animals, and humanizes them. So Randolph isn't a rabbit devil fruit user, he's not a uh, rabbit mink, he's an actual rabbit that's been humanized with a human soul. So I think that's a really cool new concept, I guess. And the, uh, the things that have been humanized are now called homies. Um, it's a g goofy, silly name, but I don't mind it. I actually kind of like it. I think the goofy, silly stuff in One Piece is pretty funny a lot of the time, so I like it. Um, and in addition to that, we do find out that those black creatures that have been going around collecting all the lifespans and stuff are called incarnations, and they are actually pieces of Big Mom's soul or things created from Big Mom's soul. So it's kind of, um, I don't know, it's it's weird because it, it just makes me think back to when she killed her um, son and that's still just, for somebody that cares so much about family, like supposedly, that's just so weird the way she killed her son and just cleaned up the pieces of his soul or whatever. Um, but yeah, getting way off base there. 
but uh, it turns out she can't put the souls into corpses or other people. So it's like her ability is almost like, uh, I don't, I don't want to say an anti-Moria, but like how Moria couldn't put stuff in inanimate objects or whatever, I don't think, but he could use his shadows to animate corpses or the shadows could go into other people, but that's the only things that Big Mom's souls can't go into, yet they can go into random objects and non-human things. Um, or non, uh, non-human fish man, whatever you would... What, what? The sentient species? I don't know. Sentience? Nah, not even sure how to put... Not sure how to put the way that works. But, um, yeah. So we find out that the giant dude was actually one of Big Mom's husbands, but he was tossed to the curb once he gave her two daughters. Then this dude shows up and is like, yo, you're giving away information. And the dude looks goofy as hell, just like the giant dude does. So many characters this arc look goofy as hell, but I don't know, it sort of fits with the theme of the arc. So again, not a, not a bad thing or anything. Um, but I don't know, I... I almost feel like he's gonna just be like a scrub enemy and Luffy's gonna put him down even though the dude has a title one of the three sweet commanders and that sounds like something important don't know if it is but it sounds like something important um, he's also the tenth son of Big Mom Charlotte Cracker um, and then we just end the chapter with finding out that the two daughters that the giant dude mentioned are actually Chiffon, which if you don't remember, she's the one that uh, is married to Capone, and Lola, who, as we all know, appeared in, uh, what was it, Thriller Bark. So, yeah, really cool how all of this uh, worked out, I guess. But either way, either way. I thought it was really, really cool, and of course, at the end, Nami recognizes Lola's name. I, I don't know, we got so much info here, I feel like all of that was amazing. I felt like it was a really fun chapter, I was never bored or disinterested in any of it. I really loved seeing the flashback sort of fight with Brulee, even though it was pretty short. I liked that we actually got to see how all of that worked out. Um, hopefully we can get Carrot and Jobber back soon. Because uh, I don't, I don't want to go forever without seeing Carrot and Jobber. I, I want to see more of them, and I want to see a lot more of Brooke and Pedro. I, Jinbei as well. There's just, like I said, there's so many plot points flying around that it makes my head spin at this point. But um, this turned out to be a really short review. I wasn't expecting it to be this short. But essentially, that's what I thought about. I thought it was really, really good. But, and we got a ton of information, but we did only see the one group. I don't know, my, like my thoughts are conflicted like that. It's not as good as it could have been for sure if it like showed a lot more people or if it was like a big feelsy chapter or anything. It wasn't like one of those chapters but as far as like info dumps go and stuff like that and getting a little bit of adventure in there as well this turned out really well and I didn't think there was really a bad thing to say about it. So um I don't think I've ever given a score that wasn't like in a full rounded number or a 0.5, but this one I feel like giving it an 8.5 is a little bit too much, but I also think it was good. I think it deserves more than an 8, so I'm going to give it like 8.25 or something. Yeah, 8.25 uh, Mirror Worlds out of 10. Hopefully our queen is freed soon. Our queen. Free the queen. Um, yeah. Mm, rabbit boys. But either way, like if you did like this video, comment down there and uh, tell me what you thought of this chapter, what you thought of my thoughts on it, of course. Um, then subscribe for more One Piece, both manga and anime, Tower of God, 12 Beasts, starting Boku no Hero Academia soon. Uh, just a friggin' ton of stuff going on on the channel, like more than I could list here and be reasonable with the time. So uh, check out stuff and sub if you want. Follow on Twitter if you want as well. I'll try to keep you updated there and stuff. And that is it. So thank you one last time for watching, and I'll see you all next time.